Hi everybody. Um, this is a little teaser preview, if you will, of a new feature in the Grobato to Moto Toolkit. It's a feature that allows you to create um, fall-off weight maps along the length and across the width of Grobato's seam strips. You see the seam strips slightly darker here in this model. Um, the process is really simple. You simply mark some part of the seam. We're looking at the seam there. You see it has six rows. You mark some part of the seam with a selection of polygons or vertices. And uh, it doesn't matter how you make the selection. You can see I was confused about how to do it here. But uh, once you have a selection, you simply trigger the uh, new toolkit tool, seam fall off weight. And it generates a, it, what it does is actually propagates, uh, it marches along the seam, starting where you uh, set up those, one or more of those uh, key points with the polygon selection, and creates a nice gradient as it steps outward from that point. And uh, this is a really nice setup for modeling. It's a kind of fall off that you can't get with any of the uh, standard fall off options. It's very specific to the geometry. It will actually propagate out along branches in the uh, seam network. This little model is so simple. There is, well, there actually is a branch there towards the back and we'll see that later. But you can see it, it sets up a nice uh, gradient fall off so that when you use just your typical trivial uh, basic uh, transform tools, you get these wonderful shapes. Now I'm going to jump around a little bit here and go back to our old weight and slice tool, which has been around for a long time. But when you're using it uh, together with this new seam fall off weight, you've kind of used up the seam rows that you had, which it normally takes advantage of to give you smooth transitions. Um, so in this case, what we're doing is, uh, when using the uh, weight and slice tool, is we're subdividing the outermost, in this case the third row, of the seam, and that gives us some additional seam rows so that when I then manipulate that patch with the weight and slice uh, tool uh, gradient and fall off applied, uh, weight map applied, I still get a nice uh, rounded uh, and a smooth corner where I pull that down. All right, so uh, the two work together quite nicely, and you can do them in either order. Uh, in this case, I just decided to try applying the some weight and slice manipulation first. And you can see me doing that on the underbelly of our little craft here. And uh, of course this affects how the um, seam fall off weight stuff will, will uh, affect that seam because now the seam has been uh, quite uh, significantly distorted. But it will work nonetheless. So here I am selecting my starting points for the fall off. And, uh, Duh, I didn't realize that I could make this selection with uh, mirror symmetry, X symmetry turned on and, and wouldn't have had to go back and forth from side to side. But in any case, as foolish as it is, I get uh, both sides of this seam symmetrically selected. And then we're ready to apply the seam fall off weight tool. And we'll take a look at the vertex map, the weight map that was created. And you can see it falls off nicely from those starting points. And again, just using something as simple as the scale tool, I am able to pull out these nice graceful fenders. Uh, there are several varieties of, of um, fall off within the fall off, if you will, the typical ease in and ease out sort of thing. Uh, same thing with the profile across the seams. And one of those options is to create a, a bevel, which I'm going to do in this case. And uh, again, I'm not going to, uh, this is not a tutorial, it's really just a preview. We'll, I will do a tutorial and, and uh, show you folks all of the exact settings and that sort of thing. But what you will see here is that since I have chosen the bevel option, I've chosen to bevel one row, you get a nice crisp beveled effect once you start manipulating that seam. So it's a, it's a really fun way to model. Um, it takes great advantage of the structure of Roboto's seam net meshes. It has a, a great deal of power and flexibility. It's really easy to use. Uh, you'll notice when I'm setting up these uh, key polygons, by the way, they can be vert vertex or polygon selections, I'm kind of sloppy. I let them just lap over the seam, and that's absolutely fine as far as the tool is concerned. It automatically trims this propagation that occurs uh, to just the seam rows and sets up your weight map uh, accordingly. So it has a variety of uses. This tool has a variety of uses. Here I'm using it really as a, as a major modeling feature. 
Uh, in this example, um, it was used more for the uh, kind of typical uh, fine adjustment of seam rows in, in these sort of bevel and, and channel effects. It's a great way to control those effects and get them to uh, fade out where you don't want them and uh, accentuate them where you need them. This feature will be available in the V104 toolkit coming out in just a few days, and I will uh, do some tutorial videos at that time. Thanks for watching.